an important part of a good ringmaster's job is not just announcing the uh, the show, but to make money for the producer. Again, pushing those elephant rides, pony rides, pictures with Spider-Man, pictures with Anna, Anna and Elsa. So it's a real challenge, you know, to to do a pitch because you're moti trying to motivate people, you know, to get out of their seats. Each year, here at the circus, we like to have a new and exciting toy for the children. Now, in your bedroom at night, your ceiling is much lower, and you can turn out all of the lights and put on an incredible light show. Now, all of our light-up toys come complete with the batteries and no extra charge. Visit the Toy Man right now or the Toy Stand at intermission. Brian La Palm is a seasoned pitchman. He spent four decades selling novelties on circuses large and small. Along the way, Brian has collected a zillion jackpots or stories of his circus exploits. Here are just two of them that remain indelible in his mind. First, pitching alien creatures. I was with uh, Sterling and Reed, uh, owned by Dick Garden, and this was 1998. And uh, the toy manager, concession manager, came to me and said, Brian, we have all of these blow-up vinyl aliens that are just not selling. Were and you ringmaster? I was the ringmaster, yes. And he said, can you, can you p try to come up with a good pitch for these? So we had just two days earlier, we'd played Roswell, New Mexico, and I went to the Alien Roswell Museum, you know, and they talk about the aliens. So I said, I've got it. So the next show, I had the concession people put bring all of the aliens, the baby aliens and the big blow-up aliens. I had them put them in the center ring of the three-ring circus. And I said, ladies and gentlemen, two days ago we played Roswell, New Mexico, which is famous for aliens. And the next day we opened up the trailer doors and the semi-truck doors and we were overloaded with aliens. Evidently, the aliens decided to run away from Roswell and join a circus. I said, so now as you can see before you, we have all of these aliens and we just don't have enough room to transport them. So we're going to do a little alien adoption party. You can come right out of your seats right now step into the center ring look around we have all different size aliens all different color aliens please come down now and adopt an alien the, you can adopt a baby alien for five dollars or an adult for eight dollars and that little pitch worked brian also came up with a clever angle to tout an unpopular color the orange balloons you know, any, every balloon vendor on any circus knows that out of the red balloons, the blue, the green, the purple, and the orange, there's one color balloon that never sells. No one buys the orange balloons. So on George Carden's Big Shrine Circus, I noticed that whenever the balloon vendors would come out at the beginning of the year, they didn't bring the orange balloons out in those bags of 100 balloons, they take all the colors out, but they would leave the orange balloons in those bags and wouldn't use them. That bothered me that I could not sell those orange balloons. So I laid awake at night in the trailer, you know, a couple nights and said, aha. So the next show, I did my pitch and said, ladies and gentlemen, we have the big beautiful balloon on a stick. However, Actually, the balloon does not come on a wooden stick anymore. When I was young, it did, a little thin wooden stick. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the circus balloon comes on the world's longest white plastic drinking straw. Take a look at it, boys and girls. This is the longest drinking straw you've ever seen. Why a kid could sit in the living room and suck down his chocolate milk while it's still in the kitchen. Well, I'm telling you, Lane, within two weeks, we sold out of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those orange balloons. Not because those little kids wanted to buy an orange balloon, but because they wanted the three foot long, the world's longest white plastic drinking straw. I'm currently employed by George Carden, who's the largest producer of shrine circuses in the United States. Uh, we're off for the summer. But it's a pleasure to be on that show. It's one of the finest circuses I've ever been on. Like many ringmasters, Brian's interest in all things circus and carnival sideshows 
started at an early age. When I was born in Willimantic, Connecticut in 1957, my dad was an amateur magician and would take us kids, my brothers and sisters and I, to any fair, carnival and circus that would play 40 miles within uh, Willimantic. I always knew I wanted to be a magician. I loved the carnivals. I loved the, the sideshows. I loved the circuses. My, the first circus I ever saw was uh, Clyde Beatty Cole Brothers Circus when I was seven years old. I saw a magician and there and I said I want to do that I want to do it on the circus then I saw a sideshow and I said I want to learn how to be a fire eater and uh, so that's how I, I started and I was allowed to graduate Wyndham High School in Willimantic Connecticut one month early in 1976 to take my first job with the Royal Ranch Wild West Circus and as a, a circus performer we supply our own our own living accommodation so uh, the, my first circus 1976 uh, as a clown with the Royal Ranch Wild West Circus, I was in a clown sleeper, but it only took one year of being with other people with dirty feet that it's like, I need my own. So the second year in 1977, I had my own trailer, 13 foot. Yeah, I, I learned to pitch uh, on my four years with Norman Brooks Circus Sideshow that really played carnivals. And, uh, you know, I was just a kid. I'd done two years of the circus, but nothing like being on the outside bally platform uh, outside the sideshow and you have to stop all those people who are walking by on the midway on the carnival you have to stop them and get their attention and then you know convince them to buy a ticket for the big sideshow behind you that had the sword swallower and the fire eater and miss electra and the rubber girl and the elephant skin boy and all of that in addition to announcing acts in numerous entertainment venues the Palm has applied other skills to enhance his career, especially magic, fire eating, and volcanic eruptions. Learning to eat fire was a requirement for Brian's first sideshow job. And I said, Mr. Brooks, my name is Brian LaPalm. I've been in show business for two years, and I need a job next year. And I said, I'm a magician. And he said, we really don't need a magician. We just do one magic trick. He said, what we really need is a fire eater. So I lied and said, well, Mr. Brooks, I said, I can do fire eating. I learned it outside, wind, getting burnt, you know, the whole winter. But by the time uh, spring rolled around, my burns had healed and I could do a four minute sideshow fire eating act. And a, a few years later, I added the fire volcanoes and then took a little sideshow act and brought it to the center ring of the circus. I've always enjoyed, you know, talking and using the, vi the voice and we all know that actors try out for a part in a movie or on stage. We all, they all read the same words, but there has to be, a, you know, in the circus, there has to be a sense of urgency. You have three minutes and three minutes only to come down now and buy your peanuts. In three minutes, they're gone, we're moving on. So when you're on the circus, you can be more exciting, you know, presenting a panoramic pantheon of pachydermal perfection, pound for pound, the most powerful performers on the planet, the Shrine Circus Elephant. Lots of enthusiasm. This is my 41st year uh, in the circus and doing a, as the ringmaster and I'm 60 years old. I can't see, you know, that I'll ever retire. It's just a great job. Not only can you see the greatest country in the world, the United States, you can see little towns, big towns, but you're in front of a new audience every night. I think Mary Martin, when she played, you know, Peter Pan back in the 50s, they said, how can you do this? The same lines every night. She said, but it's a different audience, honey. So you know what? It's a different audience every time. And I just love being in front of that audience. And if you can make someone smile for a couple of minutes, you know, you've done your job. Latching onto Brian De Palm's enthusiasm, I'm Lane Talbert. See you at the circus.